What is going on guys? Austin Nurcho here and today we're doing some more Marvel Legends and this time we are doing the Marvel Studios first 10 years set of Marvel Legends here. So of course this is the 10th anniversary set of Marvel Legends that, that, that they did where they did like a set of they start from zero, but we've already done the zero, which is the Red Skull Tesseract set we did a couple months ago back from San Diego Comic Con. I believe it was like exclusive then. So you can see that video, which I may link it up above here. Um, but so that starts at zero and goes all the way to, I think it's considered 11, I want to say, which is an uh, uh, like an additional Ultron they made at like the last minute or something. But these go in the order of the movies that came out. So here you can see we start off with Iron Man 1, where we've got Tony Stark and the um, I forget, Mark 1, I guess is what it's called there. But yeah, this is from Iron Man 1. This is number 1. So there's cool stuff all over these boxes. Now, these were more expensive figures, and there's a lot of exclusives. I think this one's a Walmart. I kind of have little sticky notes I wrote on ones I could remember. But this was, I believe, a Walmart exclusive set. But it's cool because, again, I'm not going to be able to fit it in the camera very much on all these. But they make have these little pictures from the movies. And when you stick them all together, it makes, you know, kind of a cool picture. But the boxes are all different sizes because they'll be like one character two characters three characters and they're all different sizes so they all kind of don't fit together but then again we've got iron man one the first or the iron man logo there we got tony stark iron man mark one which was obadiah stain at the end who did that but iron man's first suit um then on the back end we got my walmart sticker so we got the poster there for iron man the first one then we've got you know tony stark and iron man mark one so pictures and stuff from the movie 2008 which is when the first one came out and then we've got some information over here on the side from the Iron Man movie so that's number one so it does say like on this side it has a number one so they go in order so we've got um, the Iron Man one there then next up is number two we've got Red Skull and by the way we're doing the first half um, I've kind of divided them into f how many figures there are so this will be the first ten figures so it goes through number six is what this one will be so we got ten figures in this but then we've got Red Skull here and so we've got Red Skull of course from Captain America the first Avenger one of my favorites because I'm a huge Captain America fan and I really like this movie but from Captain America so again there's Captain America with the logo and everything and Red Skull then on the side here Captain America 2011 the first Avenger number two here and then again the poster from the back there and then Red Skull and all sorts of stuff like that and so that looks really cool 2011 is when this one came out so that's cool in the end there's some of the picture that goes along there and I don't again don't remember if this one's an exclusive or not um, but hopefully I, before I, I post this, I can do more research. So in the description, you can see if they are exclusives or not. But from there, we go on to number three, which is Iron Man from the first Avenger movie. Not Captain America first Avenger, but the Avengers number one there, as you can see. And so we got Iron Man, and this is, of course, number three, with the Iron Man Mark Seven outfit there. And so the Avengers from 2012 there number three and then of course the avengers poster on there and iron man in the mark 12 2012 there was that year and number three then we go on to number four which is from iron man three and here we've got um a set of three packs is this correct i feel this is out of order for some reason like i don't feel iron man three was in front of the next one but We'll just go along with it. So here we've got a pack of pepper pots there. And then we've got Iron Man. I don't remember if Mark. It looks like 22 is what that set is, I guess. It looks pretty cool, though. And then, of course, the Mandarin, or Trevor, as you could call him, because it turned out not to be the Mandarin. But this set looks really cool. So we got Iron Man 3 there, another Iron Man logo on the side, which this is a long box, so it's hard to fit. So Iron Man 3, 2013. And number four there and then this is an amazon exclusive pack so we had an amazon sticker there and then we've got the uh poster there for iron man 3 we got the mandarin mark 22 and pepper pots there and so that looks really cool and so that again was an amazon exclusive and then next up which again is why i said i think this is out of order for some reason is thor the dark world maybe i just messed up when it came out i get they're both 2013 so i don't know for sure, but it is from Thor The Dark World where we have Lady Sif and Thor, of course, there, which looks really cool. And so, again, we've got Thor and Sif from Thor The Dark World. And then on the side here, 2013 Thor The Dark World, number five, and the poster there. And again, 2013, and Sif and Thor on that. So that's another cool set there. And the last one for this uh, video that we're going to be doing 
is Ronan the Accuser, of course, from Guardians of the Galaxy. What a great movie that was. And so we've got Ronan the Accuser, of course, the villain from that again. These are supposed to be, like, figures they never really made when they made the Marvel Legends set for these movies. Um, and so they're kind of remaking the characters they miss now for some of them. But there we've got Guardians of the Galaxy from 2014, number six there. Again, the last one where we're ending at. And then we've got Guardians of the Galaxy poster 2014 and Ronin. And this was an Entertainment Earth exclusive, at least supposedly that's what it says on their website, which is where we got it from. And that's going to be the last figure we do have this set. So this is going to be kind of a longer video going through all the different characters and stuff. But it should be pretty cool and everything. So let's go ahead and get into them. So we're starting out here with the number one from this 10th anniversary set, which is the Tony Stark Mark One set from the first Iron Man movie. So we're going to look at Iron Man over here first or Tony Stark I meant. So there we go. We got a face looking pretty similar to Robert Downey Jr. I think that's a pretty good portrayal and stuff. His upper lip mustache kind of looks a little weird and stuff the way that it's painted on and that they did and stuff. Doesn't look too great and then the hair looks pretty decent until you get towards the back here and then it just kind of looks like they um, did whatever they could and kind of messed up a little bit with the paint stuff. But other than that I think it looks really good and looks pretty close to Robert Downey Jr. So I think the um making it look like that they did a really good job then go down he's pretty uh like a boring character he's just in a suit so nothing too special he's just in a suit that we've been seeing um them starting to put some characters in now so he does have a tie so it is a loose tie or thing so you can you know move it around and stuff it is to attach but it's you know can move and everything then he's got a suit jacket on here or a suit and so he's got the jacket as you can see there and then it's got the um pants here i don't know trousers i guess i don't know what you call them and he's got a belt on then a white button up underneath long sleeve what would be a long sleeve button up shirt underneath and everything and so there's a, and then he's got some nice uh, shiny dress shoes here he does have some issues standing I do have to kind of get him placed where and he's got to lean forward so again we'd have some standing issues even though his feet have a lot of movement I just can't get them to place where he's not having issues falling and so I just have to get it where he's leaning forward and then he stands so um, other than that um, not too bad I guess um, so he does have some movement so his suit as you can see does come out you can see through and stuff so you could technically probably take it off if you wanted but then he just looked weird but he does have you know arm movements as much as he can because he does have this um, piece here of the jacket or that's you know limiting his range but he does have the upper arm movement the double elbow joint the wrist which is feels kind of stiff I don't know if it's just the joint because of the sleeve or something I don't really know um, but his hand can move and flex and everything then he's got the ab crunch there as you can see twist at the waist the hip movements the thigh um, then we got the double knee and then of course the foot as I mentioned can twist back and forth and like that so he's got all sorts of range of movements going on and everything so it's pretty good then of course the head movement so pretty much all the characters will be about the same I would believe except for maybe a couple which we'll see probably next so there is the tony stark again we don't have much to go into on each of these then we've got the mark one which um i guess looks cool i wish he was bigger i feel he should be uh pretty big because i feel in the movie it was a really big suit but um i guess you know they just wanted to make it um, pretty close to the same size as Tony. So here is a look at the old. Again, this is um, supposed to be Iron Man's very first suit. So it's a homemade suit. Again, he made in the cave when he was trapped by like the terrorist people. And so this was the suit he was able to make with what scraps he had and everything. So again, it's a cool looking figure and everything. And so I like the look of the head. You know, it looks like the original Iron Man face and everything but of course the original Iron Man from the comics wasn't this big and stuff so he's got some extra armor here probably some like gas to shoot the flame I think he shoots flames and stuff then of course the I, I want to say arc reactor but I don't know if that's what they call it but his chest piece there and um, or the piece there in his chest and then on this arm they threw in a nice little gun I guess you could say um, so it's got the hole there and then you get this uh, blaster which I think is pretty stupid because I hate when stuff goes in that shoots but it doesn't like stick or anything Thing. so I don't know if it's just thing you stick it in and then you just pull it back and then fire it like that and that's how it's supposed to work I don't really know I keep like it won't go any farther than what it is um, so I don't know exactly what's supposed to be going on but again I don't like that it would have been nice just to have like what a flame looking thing like sticking out of here like this or something if they wanted to do that where it's but again supposed to be shooting the flames and everything uh, movement wise he 
doesn't have any head movement, so the head doesn't move. He does have arm movements because there is a big like ball joint up here. So it can uh, twist around and do a little bit of a butterfly movement there. Then he's just got a single elbow, which can move very little. It does move, but it's, again, it's very little. Just range movement, but it does twist around as well. And so no hand movement because it's attached to this. Should be the same on this side again, elbow, um, but no hand movement and the shoulder no uh, ab crunch but it does twist at like the upper waist part there and then it does have some um, hip movement there and then a little bit of a knee again pretty similar to the elbow just very limited range of movements and then it does have some foot flexion there that can move bend back and or move back and forth as you can see there just a little bit of range of movement there so again of course with the look of it you'd expect it not to have a whole lot of movement and everything but let's um, take a look here from the box real quick so again this is from Iron Man 1 the first movie that kicked off the MCU uh, for Tony Stark says the heir of Stark Industries Tony Stark does not realize the impact of his weapons of war until he is kidnapped and forced to build one or die so again we saw that in the movie and for the Mark 1 it says Tony Stark creates a suit out of weapons weapon materials and escapes from confinement and a clanking suit of material later known as Mark 1. So there we got the first one for this set from Iron Man. And next up is number two, Red Skull from Captain America, the first Avenger. And so this, again, is a cool figure because I love the Captain America movie. And so having a Red Skull is pretty cool. So there we've got Red Skull with his Red Skull, as you'd imagine. Again, we've done a figure. It was pretty similar to this. He just had a trench coat on instead of, like, this sort of um, overcoat type thing. He just had the long trench coat down to his legs. Um, but it was pretty similar, like, in design and looks and everything. They had the new skull because the um, older versions of Red Skull, his face looks a little weird where this looks more movie realistic and like I'm sure it's just because I've seen the movie and of course he was in the Aven new Avengers movie and everything where he returned but I think it looks you know kind of like uh, I forget I want to say I forget what the guy's name is now um, I can't remember what his name was the actor I think it kind of looks like him he looks like Johan Schmidt um, but that's a cool looking outfit so we got the Red Skull then going into what's supposed to be you know like a Nazi armor but for Hydra and you can see there on his belt it's got the Hydra logo the skull with the eight legs or the octopus and so then he's got a nice so it's a really dark green so then it's got a black stripe down the middle with the buttons so the gold buttons and so again as I mentioned it's just the dark green and then I like these red stripes coming off of it I think that that makes it look really nice instead of making you just all flat green or something i like the detail on it. it's got the high bl uh, black neck color there and then it goes down hydro logo there on his arm and then he's got black leather gloves on they go down he's got his um pants that match so it's the same sort of green dark green color there and then all the way down to his um knee high black leather boots there as well again looks really cool and again we've done a figure similar to that very um short time ago um for accessories he comes with a lot so he comes with a gun here so it's just i assume to be a hydro cannon or something hydro weapon of some sort that shoots um, I think this is the gun that shoots the thing and like just makes them disappear like it disintegrates stuff. I assume that's maybe what this weapon is here from the movie. But we got that. And then it comes with stuff to be an army builder. Oh, I forgot to mention he does come with a hand here as well. So he's got two like trigger hands. So they have the fingers out for the triggers. But then he does come with um, a left hand here that's more like a grip. So I would assume you could put it in the hand and then use this to grip the gun like that and everything. So that would be pretty cool to do. But he comes with that. Then we've got, I assume to be, like I said, an army builder. So it comes with three different heads that I assume you just put on his body. And I would, like I said, I assume that's what these are for. I don't really know. Or if they go, no, because the Hydra agent set is from, like, the comics and they're a different color. But it comes with three different heads here. Of course, you see all these little different looks throughout the Avenger, uh, Captain America movie and stuff. So you can just, if I don't keep dropping them, you can just replace them on here. And so I guess you have all different sort of Hydra agents that you can, um, again, still dropping them, can then have, some, but it'd be kind of, it's kind of weird because you would need more of these figures, but you each one comes up with three heads, so you'd have all these extra heads. So I think it's kind of weird um, and kind of pointless or useless or something like that. And then it also comes with this um, vest that I assume if you're going to do the army builder, you'd put this on over the top. Um... I was going to see if there is how this comes apart. Again, I have no clue what this is at all. That's just my guess. Okay, so that you'd pop it out here, it looks like. 
there like that and then you could slide it over the top of him and then again make more of the army builders and stuff so that's pretty much it i guess for the red skull i mean again i assume you, this is an army builder set but again it may it doesn't really make sense but again this is number two from the 10th anniversary from captain america the first avenger it says red skull obsessed with the power of the tesseract johan schmidt teams up with arnim zola to create a supercharged web arms force that will change the fate of world war ii and the world so that sounds pretty cool and that's going to be it for the red skull next up we've got iron man from the avengers movie and so i guess i don't really remember much about this like his sexual suit some of the stuff it does we'll look at i don't remember it in the movie but um by seeing the picture on the box it you know looks almost exactly like this one and it goes to more the classic look of the red and the gold color so as you can see he's red and gold it does have some silver on him there but this is a pretty cool iron man figure so he is really tall too like he doesn't like i usually have characters standing back here but his head's out of frame so he's a pretty tall character compared to some of the others but there's a look at the Iron Man, of course, classic Iron Man face there of the red with the gold in the middle, and then you can see his glowing eyes there. Then go down, he's in his mostly red armor. He's got his like in little arc reactor type thing there on his chest, and then, the, then some gold there on the biceps and some on the side of his um, abs and stuff there. Then go down, the legs continue on with the red, and then you can see some gold there and some silver on top there on his. Um, kind of like thighs and everything and then just continue with the red all the way down looking like a cool um, Iron Man armor there um, going into more detail though he's got um, the shoulder pieces that actually have some flexibility and stuff so as you move his arms around it does flex and move with his arms and then he's got you know these armored chest piece or these chest piece I can't say it, armored piece I can't want to say chest pieces for some reason um, but on his like hands and stuff so he's got these pieces there and then uh, you can see on this one where he's doing his blast hand it does you know it's all bent up and folded back and everything and it goes um, along with it and everything so that's pretty cool that they did that um, then again we got his armor there so nothing really special there but then if we flip to the back this is what I don't remember he's got these little pieces that open up and so it's kind of like I know like in the um, new Avengers movie he um, uh, does sort of this thing and I think it's like supposed to be thrusters or something that come out of here something d goes along with this in the movie where these things open but I don't remember this happening in the Avengers movie unless it's he does this and all sorts of little like rockets and grenades shoot out and you know shoot some of the Chichari aliens or something I don't really remember that much about it, but it looks really cool and stuff. And I just like the armor overall. It looks pretty cool for Iron Man. Uh, Movement-wise, he's got pretty much all the exact same movements. Um, not too much limitations. Of course, this hand with it being like this, you can't flex it or anything. It just can twist around and move a little. But he's got all the arm movements. His head does move a little, as you can see. He's got the ch um, chest twist. It doesn't crunch or bend or anything. Oh, it has a little tiny bit, but it mostly just twists around. No waist twisting, though. Then we've got the hip, which has some limitations due to the design of his you know armor and everything so you can't twist it but it does have the twist here on the like upper you know right at the hip that can twist around there so you do have some more additional movement added in with that then we've got the double knee joint there and then of course moving of the foot which even though the armor looks like it'd be in the way it does still have quite a bit of movement can't move as much back and forth but it still does move and everything so that looks pretty cool. Then for accessories, he does come with, um, let me get his standing back up here. There. Um, for accessories, he comes with the extra hand so you can um, replace the this hand with both blasters or you can turn them into both fists with that one. And then he's got, of course, the blast. I don't know what you call it. I want to say lasers, but it could be fire blast. I don't really know. Um, of course, shooting out of his hand and then if you wanted to put both of them on. He could be shooting from both hands like this, like pew, like that. Um, so that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and read the box for Iron Man. Again, this is from 2012 with the Avengers movie. It says Iron Man Mark 7 is what this one's called. Equipped with the mighty vibranium arc reactor and enhanced flight capacities, the Mark 7 is fully loaded ray deployment suit build for heavy combat. So there we go with all that information. So that's me for the Iron Man Mark 7. Next up is number four from 20. 13 Iron Man 3 and then this set we've got Pepper Parts the Mark 22 Iron Man suit and the Mandarin and so this is um I want to say cool set because you get three figures and again there's two figures for sure I mean I three we've never had but two that are worth having I guess you could say but they're kind of weird and so we'll go and start with it first so first up we got the Pepper Pot so this is one you know a character they've never made before but I mean she doesn't really do much so I 
you know get why they haven't made a character or a figure of her yet but um i think it looks pretty close to i think it's Gwyneth Paltrow, I want to say, is the actor, um, actress that plays her. I don't remember the names for sure, but I want to say that's who that is. But if it's wrong, I'm sure someone will correct me. Um, but I think that it looks, you know, pretty close to her face and everything. It's got, you know, nice blue eyes and everything. And then, of course, her haircut, where it's got, like, the red color, but it's also, like, a blonde as well. And, um, again, I like the molding stuff of Marvel Legends. I think it looks, it makes the hair look more realistic as it probably would. But then, go now, she's in very, um, not much clothing, I guess. So, there, she's got, like, a... a it's like workout clothes, so there she's got like a workout brawl, I guess you could say. And so it's just an all-black brawl and then no clothes, you know, anywhere else. And then it goes down to like yoga pants, um, some black yoga pants, as you can see there. And then she's barefoot, which the feet look horrible. Like, they look like um, someone's feet that'd be like twice or three times her size. They look really fat, um, and they don't look good. And overall, I just don't like the look of the bottom here with the feet and stuff. It just does not look good at all but it's pretty cool i guess just to have again a figure of pepper pots and i remember she was just dressed like this in the movie and everything so i guess it kind of fits and then she comes with this accessory of an iron man arm here that attaches to her and then it shoots the laser and she gets you know infected with the extremists again i don't remember too much of the movie but i remember having she, at one point she did wear the armor when um tony was trying to save her from their um, blowing up house or whatever but um, you can see some of the stuff here, so I assume that's supposed to be, like, some of the extremists or something? I don't know, because I know the extremists is they glow red and then eventually explode and stuff like that. I don't know if that's what that's supposed to be or what for sure, but I remember her having this arm of Iron Man, but I don't remember in what context and stuff from the movie. It's been so while since I've seen Iron Man 3, but I still think it's pretty cool, but you can obviously switch out her arm again to have that if um, you wanted to and stuff, but I won't do that right now. So set her aside. Then next up, we've got the Mark 22. I think this is usually, or sometimes called like the hot rod armor or something because it's got the flames and everything. Not really sure. But it looks a lot like War Machine until you get into the red. So it's like War Machine mixed into um, Iron Man. So there we've got the black and uh, silver armor there as you can see with the head and then going down all the way the chest through the upper legs and then same to like the biceps on the arms and then it's got so got the arc reactor there in the center again the same flexing parts there on the um, shoulders this one doesn't move as much for some reason but then it goes into the red as you can see there which I like to fade from the black into the red I think it looks really nice and cool so that looks awesome there then going into legs again it's a same it's a regular um, leg joint there's not anything special like that last Iron Man suit of armor um, so I think it looks pretty cool or it's nice that it does have um, just normal leg joints so you can move a lot easier a double knee joint uh, yeah a double knee joint I say no it's not but I guess it is a double knee joint um, actually it may not it does have additional movement there at the top but it's just not moving for some reason so it's kind of cool that they have this piece of armor that covers the knee that you can see here this piece that covers it up and stuff so that's pretty cool then go down again we got the flames on the bottom of the legs um coming off of the feet and everything and then it goes into more black with red there at the bottom so again that looks really cool i really like this look of arm um suit of armor overall it does have attachments here, so maybe this was supposed to be like a war machine, you know, with the guns attached to it. Not really sure. It could just be, you know, just stuff they put on there. But again, that looks really cool. I like the look of the armor overall with the mixture from the black into the red. And then last up, we got the Mandarin, or again, Trevor, because it turned out this wasn't the real Mandarin. It was the um, other guy in the movie that I can't remember his name. Um, but he turned out just to be an actor, the Mandarin here, but it looks pretty cool. So we got the Mandarin with, it. so there's his face again, looks like the actor Ben's Kingsley, I fo camera focusing issues today. Um, but there's a look at his face again, looks like him. He's got the long beard and stuff that he had. Then he's got the shaved head with the like ponytail part of the, his hair up here, which looks, I guess, kind of goofy and stuff. Um, but then we've got his green cloak, which again, looks a lot like the Mandarin from the comic books. You can see the detail they have in here if it'll focus there's just all sorts of little details of like flowers and stuff that are uh, made into the cloak and everything um but then he's got you know it looks like a hoodie type elf, um, hood up and then it goes into gold and then the darker green there on the outside it's got some nice um designs there on the cuffs of the jet uh coke or cloak whatever you want to call it then underneath He's got, you know, like a green tunic with a black shirt underneath. And then for a belt, he's got, you know, it looks like a rope belt tied around with some sort of cloth material there that you'd see from like the Middle East. Then he's got some camo 
pants on there again fitting in because they're supposed to be like a terrorist group so it fits in with the outfits and stuff then some military style boots and everything and then of course looking at his fingers he does have the tin rings which is a part of mandarins the real mandarin stuff the tin rings and everything which he does have but of course don't do anything in the movie at all um for movement wise it's i believe pretty much the same no ab crunch he does twist at the waist a little it's kind of hard um to Get him to do there we go twisting at the waist there it has all the same arm movements one arm joint for him because of his um, coat and then he's got the same hip or movements there at the thighs the upper or hip then the upper thighs double knee and foot joints and all sorts of stuff so he's got all the same movements just no ab crunch or anything on him and a single elbow joint on that so that's it for this set so again this is iron man 3 from 2013 so for pepper pots we've got when ceo of stark industries pepper parts is infected with a life-threatening extremist virus tony stark's mission to take down the mandarin gets personal so we got information on her then we've got the iron man mark 22 it says as the tin rings criminal organization begins to terrorize nations around the world tony stark looks to shut down its alleged leader of the mandarin as iron man and for the Mandarin himself, says, under the guise of Mandarin, Trevor Slattery works under extremist propagator Aldrin Killians, or Aldrich Killian, so there's the guy's name, taking credit for systematic attacks on global soils and hoping to profit from feeding both sides of the war on terror. So there we've got the set from Iron Man 3. Then next up, we've got set number five from Thor The Dark World, and this is from 2013. So first up, we got Thor here, which he's really tall, like, compared to Sif and stuff, so it's... To get him in the camera, I gotta move him really close and stuff. So there we got the face of Chris Hemsworth again. I don't think this one looks as good. I think this is probably one of the worst um, looking ones. I don't think it looks as much like him. Just looks like some random person. Um, but he does have the beard on, which I think the paint don't didn't look very good on the paint. It's just a splotchy brown paint again because he's got like the brownish blonde um, facial hair, which were in the first Thor. He had the pure blonde, but I like how they switched it more organic. Um, but it just they made it like a splotchy brown which i don't really like the way it looks very much um but then he's got his hair pulled back into a like ponytail type thing there and so that looks really nice again the face and the hair look really good together and stuff marvel legends does a really good job then going into his armor this is looks you know pretty good and like almost classic looking thor or like comic book version as but in real life and so they're here up on his um shoulders we've got the two attachment pieces here like class whatever for his um cape here so the cape is flowing all the way down it has some leather type look to it but especially on the inside it's got some texture i don't know if the camera will show that or focus on it but you can see it just looks like they took a sponge and put a sponge on top of it and made really weird texture on it and it feels weird too and everything but at least they added some sort of texture to it then going down we've got his um chest plate here or chest part that you know from his chest all the way down so it's just like his upper part i don't know what you'd call different pieces of clothing then he's got his chain mail arms here so again that's like a chain mail type material i think it's just supposed to be like a fabric but um i think classically like comic stuff it's supposed to be a chain mail type design Going into some gauntlets there with some gold and the brown and stuff and then red underneath. Same on both sides. And again, it's got this. This is like a dark gray or black underneath here with the gold um, design on top, which again looks nice. So coming down on his chest. And of course, the little circles, I don't know what they're supposed to be for, but that's what Thor is always designed with. Then he's got a cloth of material hanging down in front of him and on the back there as well. I like the blue underneath in that design. Some gold there on the end of these like piece of strips of leather and stuff there as well. Going into his pants again, continuing on with that diamond design from his arms again there, but into the leather leggings as well, covering that. Then going into his boots, where we got some um, boots that got some, you know, armors there, or some armor pieces there on the knees, and then some more gold going down and just all the way into the boots and everything. So again, he's a really tall character, really nice looking design for this overall. It looks really cool. Movement-wise, he does have, looks like all the same movements. I don't see anything different or abnormal. Yeah, he's got all this, uh, like, classic movements and everything, so nothing new for him. And then, of course, he does come with Mjolnir, which he's always got to have, so he's got to have his hammer, of course. So we've got Thor and Mjolnir there. Then next up, we've got Lady Sif, or Sif as they label her. And again, I think looks pretty good. I think 
kind of looks like the actress. Maybe not. Just, again, looks more like a generic um, woman's face or whatever. But her hair looks really nice, though, the way they did with the curls at the end. And you can see it there on the front there as well. So it looks really nice. Then she's got her armor where it's all silver and, like, a dark red or brownish red color. Um, so there we've got her um, chest piece going down into her gar that goes all the way down to her waist again with the silver. I like the designs and stuff they put into it for detail and everything. Then she's got some two shoulder pieces again with that red underneath it and then some bare arms where she does have the single skinny women's elbow joint which is always um, scary to deal with and mess with because of the range of movement and everything. And then she's got you know some gauntlets again continue on with the color there down to her arms. And then you go down, she does have some of the shirt hanging down underneath in front of her, similar to kind of what Thor had. Then going down to her legs where she's got some black leather pants or whatever into her boots, where she does have these knee-high, um, I assume they're supposed to be guards up here, but instead of them guarding her knees like the Thor had and past figures fed, you can still see her double knee joint there and stuff, so it's kind of weird design. But this piece of um, armor there, the silver on the front looks cool going into her leather boots. Of course, again, they got to have females with high heels because that's how they design them and everything. But it looks good overall. I guess they've never done a Sif, but I don't really think feel she's that big of a character. I know she was on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which was cool that they made, you know, a crossover character from the movies into that. Um, but, um, yeah, she hasn't been seen in the movies since Thor Dark World. Um, and again, she has some issues standing if I can get her. And she comes with some multiple accessories, so she does have her little tiny shield here that I assume you can slide on to her arm and everything, but it's a little tiny shield, again, in the design of the classic Captain America, and it's got all sorts of details on it there, if it would focus in on that, you can see there. And then she comes with a sword, so a sword like this of her sword, and then it also comes with a double sword, so I assume it's supposed to be this sword, but it just extends out a sword from the bottom, because as you can see, it's got the design here. Again, it's hard to get the focus. So we've got the sword design, and of course it's bigger like they do with figures or stuff. So you can see like this ball thing is supposed to be here, and then this other sword attaches to the bottom of it, which if I can get it in there. And so I assume that's supposed to be the sword, you know, coming out from the bottom there. But she does have that double sword, or it could just be one single blade that she splits apart and then has two swords and stuff and so that goes together with her so that's it for the figure so let's read the box and it says thor side by side with his childhood friend sif thor strikes down marauders of vanaheim i don't know if i said that right seeking to bring peace back to the nine realms and for sif it says a long time ally of, ally of thor and a powerful asgardian warrior sif battles with a double bladed sword and a keen understanding of her enemies so that's gonna be it for this thor dark world set and the last figure from this set is number six from Guardians of the Galaxy's 2014 or 2014 Guardians of the Galaxy. We have Ronan the Accuser, of course, the bad guy from that movie. And so here we've got Ronan again. I really enjoy this character in the movie, and I liked him a lot. So it'd be cool if we could see him again. But I think he ended up dying, or at least pretty sure he did. So here's a look at his face. Of course, we gotta see in the movie when he was getting. He's all blue because he is a Kree, I believe, and um, so he's got the blue skin and everything. But then they were putting this stuff that looked like tar around his face and of course drip down as you can see there with the black and stuff and like I said it looked like tar in the movie it was so it's kind of weird and then he's got his um to like chain mail design type uh headpiece here that they put on him and everything because it showed like the bunch of Kree people dressing him up and everything then we've got his armor here which again it's like a really dark color black I want to say and then it's got silver in between and I like these red marks here on his chest just adding some more detail and design don't know what they're for if anything but I just like the extra detail design he's got the shoulder pieces as well but it's attached to his uh, headdress so they don't really flex or anything but they do move because of that attachment but you can see the continuation of the same armor design of the black with the silver going down through his arms there into his um you know uh, armor there on his arms into his gauntlets and stuff and then you can see his blue hands on both sides same for both of that thing going down into his legs oh he does have these um dangly bits so he's got the one here in the front that's a continuation of the armor the sides here that go around to the back and stuff that look the same it's just you know continuation of the armor down from what i would assume to be the belt area there then also from his back he does have these pieces dangling down from the back which again add more detail into it and looks nice then he's got his um 
pants on here again look like a leather design with some silver on the front there going into the boots there again continuation with that same colored scheme and design and everything so it looks really nice um there's not a lot of color detail going into this so there's not much special to look at it's just all this like a bl mixture of black and stuff with some silver added to it then for he does come with an accessory of his weapon here his big giant hammer staff which of course as you can see it's got the purple there because it does have the purple infinity stone i can't remember which one it is at the time or at this moment but there is his cool staff thing that he has got uh, you know that he, he can hold in his hand and everything so that is pretty cool so i think that's going to be um let's see movements it looks like yeah he's got all the exact same movements got the ab crunch and twist at the waist and everything so everything is normal on him so nothing special to look at on his movements um, and so it says for ronin it says an avid loyalist to the kree whose family was killed in the kree nova wars ronin agrees to a partnership with thanos in order to take down the nova core on xandar once and for all so there we got a little bit of info there on ronin so that's gonna be it for this ronin from guardians of the galaxy so that's gonna be it for the first half of this marvel mcu 10th anniversary set with all the different marvel legends set of course where we had the tony and mock one we had i'm trying to remember all the head we had red skull that's all the way over here then we had thor and sif we had iron man from avengers one we had the iron man three set of mandarin the mock 22 i believe and pepper pots and then of course uh ronin all the way over there so that is like i said gonna be the first half so next week if you want to come back we will have the second half of um so the rest of the figure so it should be 10 more i believe and some pretty cool sets coming up with that so i hope you come back and check that one out as well but i want to thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video let me know with a thumbs up leave any comments you have for me down below and don't forget to subscribe to see more marvel legends on our channel and we'll see you next time